Aside from the power of the Padishah Emperor lies the strength and influence of the noble houses, formerly known as the Landsrad. The most politically influential group within this governing body are the Houses Major, or Great Houses. They are comprised of nobility which claim a planetary fief or homeworld, acting as both industrial and economic centers for their coffers. At any time, there are around 100 Great Houses represented in the Landsrad, though this number has historically fluctuated as their number is not fixed. With varying political and economic fortunes, there have been as few as 35 and as many as 157. However, among this conglomeration of dukes, barons, and counts are the exploits of three major houses which both the book and the upcoming film focuses. The first and most powerful is House Carino, who at the time of Dune's beginning has kept the imperial dominion for 10,000 years. House Carino gained its namesake after the Battle of Corin in 88 BG, or before Guild, and settled its ascendancy as the ruling house of the Imperium. The traditional homeworld is the harsh planet of Seleucus Segundus, but the Imperial Court and its household moved to the paradise world of Kaitain early in its history. While the reason for this migration is unknown, Seleucus Segundus still remains under the control of the Carino dynasty as a prison planet for the galaxy's convicts as well as a breeding ground for the Imperium's dreaded Sardaukar soldiers. Like its lion sigil suggests, House Carino is a proud and fierce house wielding substantial political power with their number of votes within the Landsrad and their possession of arguably the most powerful army in the universe. This does not make them strangers to the political game, however, as they are treacherous in their maintenance of power. At the house's head is the Padishah Emperor himself, Shaddam Karino IV. While he has never sired a son with his Bene Gesserit wife, Anirul, their marriage has resulted in the birth of five daughters, Yurulan, Shalice, Winsitia, Josepha, and Rugi. The legend of House Atreides' lineage dates back to the days of ancient Earth's antiquity with King Agamemnon, the son of Atreus in Greek mythology, the descendants of which are called Atreides in the Greek language. This namesake is also related to another Atreides ancestor from the Butlerian Jihad, the ruthless general Agamemnon of the Cymac Titans. The Atreides have called the verdant oceanic world of Caladan in the Delta Pavona system their home for 26 generations, and is the birthplace of both the current Duke, Leto I, and his son, Paul, who is the main protagonist of the story. House Atreides has been known for the integrity and pragmatism of its ruling Dukes for many generations. While their military power has traditionally come from their sea and air superiority, it could be said the House's true strength lies in the fierce loyalty of their soldiers and military advisors. Most notable among these being the Swordmaster Duncan Idaho and the Minstrel Warmaster of House Atreides, Gurney Halleck. The even-handed and charismatic Duke Leto Atreides I is the patriarch of the house, with his Bene Gesserit concubine Lady Jessica at his side. He has not married Jessica for political reasons, as it would be more advantageous to marry within the Great Houses or even the Imperial family itself the latter of which was even a fleeting hope of the Padishah Emperor, who hoped to wed his eldest daughter, Irulan, to the Duke, if only the political climate were different. Despite the surrounding politics, a genuine love blossomed between Jessica and Leto, which tempered the Duke's efforts in finding a suitable wife of noble birth. It was this love that encouraged Lady Jessica to disobey the mandate of the Bene Gesserit sisterhood and give birth to a son, Paul instead of a daughter, as was previously planned. Amidst the choking air and industrial wasteland that is Gaiety Prime, sits the barony of the House Harkonnen. It is a family line with a lineage from ancient Earth, claiming to originate in what was Finland in Northern Europe. After many centuries as a minor house, the Harkonnens have recently come to prominence in the last few generations through shrewd market manipulations. Its members have an infamous reputation for their unethical business practices, malevolent political jockeying, 
and their ancient feud with House Atreides. The House rules its homeworld with an iron fist, prizing industrial production and economic output at the expense of an oppressed populace. Arenas dot the vast urban centers of Guillotine Prime to keep the masses entertained through blood sport and spectacle. It is said this brutal environment has given House Harkonnen its most prized export of all, a massive military recruitment pool. Indeed, the Harkonnens have devised methods of channeling the latent oppression of their people into a merciless fighting force. Much of the treachery and malevolence notorious to House Harkonnen can be attributed to the schemes of its ruling baron, Vladimir Harkonnen. The baron is a cruel hedonist with sadistic, even pedophilic tendencies, a man without scruples in his use of systematic torture, murder, and slavery in his maintenance of power. However, he is a keen observer in recognizing talent in people, especially when it serves his own aims. This is most apparent in the use of his nephews Glossu Raban and the younger Fade Rautha. The Baron sees the Beast Raban as too brutish and dim-witted to be a worthy successor, but recognizes his utility in being a ruthless enforcer and taskmaster. While with Fade Rautha, he seeks to groom the cunning young Na Baron to succeed him, if only he could rid the young man of his more impulsive tendencies. There are many more great houses with just as many interesting characters, but for now, we hope this episode has set the political setting where the story begins. Join us for another look next time on Dune Primer. <laughs>